Skylab starts in the dreams of the people who wanted to go into space for a long time, early in the 20th century. We saw people who were thinking about how do we get humanity off the planet Earth and into space. There was a, a vision, a long-term vision the humans had of, of exploring and going beyond, higher, farther, faster. There was the technical challenge, there was the scientific interest, there was the adventure, um, and there was just simply the demonstration of managerial and organizational and industrial economic competence uh, in a world that was contested. So that was Skyline. Throughout the 1960s, they looked at a number of different ways in which you could take the Apollo uh, materials, particularly Saturn V and, and the Apollo spacecraft, and do space station-like things with them. So by the end of the 1960s, 1969, right after the successes on the landing of the moon, attention turns to uh, the space station program and Skylab is really born there, being the program for human spaceflight uh, during the early 1970s and, and to build our basis for experience uh, and to address those important questions that we had, which were, could humans physiologically adapt to long periods of space? Early 1973, we already launched Skylab. The Skylab Saturn V is sitting on one launch pad, but the two launch pads we have for the Apollo program, uh, Skylab is sitting on one launch pad just a little ways away on the other launch pad is this Saturn 1 vehicle with the command and service module because Skylab launches one day and the vehicle with the first crew uh, was supposed to launch the next day. Unfortunately, when Skylab, the laboratory, goes up, the micrometeoroid shield that was on it that also provided heat protection for the vehicle uh, rolls back, jams into the solar arrays that there are two big five kilowatt each solar arrays that we're supposed to deploy. Skylab gets in orbit, it's crippled. Uh, and, and we're in big trouble because uh, Skylab needs that energy from those big solar arrays to operate and for the mission to be successful. And in 10 days, they quickly come up with a plan. We had people sew together a parasol sunshade that they could uh, erect outside the station. They came up with some equipment that the crews could use to try and unstick the giant solar array that was stuck. And Pete Conrad and his crew, the, the first Skylab crew, go launch 10 days later and save the entire program. The you know, two and a half billion dollar program would have gone down the drain if um, the crew hadn't gone up there and saved the mission. Okay, we're free. We got four tenths of a foot per second, Houston. Roger. The story of the launch of the Skylab Orbital Workshop is one of those great triumphs of things going bad and engineers and humans and astronauts working together to fix them. They have a very successful, almost month-long mission and uh, prove that, in fact, first that the Skylab will work, that the humans are really important to those things, and they get a lot of good scientific data. And of course, we had two more crews that launched uh, later in the year. The second Skylab crew goes up for a longer period and um, you know, does lots of earth science experiments, lots of solar observations. And then the third crew finally launches at the end of 1973 and early into 74. They're up for almost three months. And they observe, uh, do solar observations, do more earth observations. We do experiments with students. There's some, the first NASA student experiments go on during Skylab. The last crew leaves Skylab uh, in early 1974. So a very successful program overall despite the fact that it almost, on the first minute of, of operations, almost went um, in the drink. One of the real triumphs of Skylab is that it basically took a situation gathering both the limits of what was possible and the possibilities uh, presented by incredible technological developments and put them together in a program that produced tremendous benefits in science, education, what spaceflight is all about. So it's a stepping stone. It was the stepping stone between the Apollo program and then later definitions of what spaceflight would mean for the United States. Skylab is the first step. We learn how to operate in space. We build on that with the ISS. We now go on further beyond low Earth orbit to visit an asteroid and then on to Mars. That's the plan, and that's where we're going. <laughs>